Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video we're coming from where we left off in the last tutorial, which was the cold and dark tutorial for the Phoenix A320. So without further ado, I want to keep it nice and simple and quick for you guys. I don't want to waste you guys' time, so let's get straight into it. So, from where we left off last time, we left it in this exact state. Right? I haven't done anything. So, th there are things which you may think I've missed out, but I'm not actually s doing everything. I'm just doing everything which is needed to get the aircraft set up for going from A to B. Just want you to fly from A to B. I'll do a video on all the extras in a complete different tutorial at the very end of the series. Okay, so we have the pushpad to connected. We are ready for pushback. So what you do from here is you'd uh, now initiate the pushback. Too small for your now aircraft. you may uh, be using GSX, you may be using anything. You may be manual controlling it. Whatever you're doing, you're going to want to get ready for pushback now. But the number one thing to remember is make sure APU is on because external power cannot be dragged along in pushback. So you must make sure your APU is supplying power to the aircraft in pushback. So to do pushback, you are just going to, uh, well, do do whatever your pushback system does. So uh, in my case, I'm just going to use GSX. I want the aircraft to uh, be facing. Uh, uh, I want the nose to be to the uh, right, so uh, I'm going to do nose right turn left. Hey, use your parking brakes, please. And it allows you to raise the parking brakes. The parking brakes are down here, so you click this button here, and that will use parking brakes. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at wheel. Now you can start the engines. Now to start the engines, you must first put the fuel pumps on, which you'll repeat. Just basically select all the off buttons, click them all, and it'll put them all to on. And uh, once you've done that, uh, the engines can, are ready to be started. Now to do this, you're going to want to flick this little switch here one notch to the right. That will select IGN start and you'll find this page comes up, the engine page. And once you've done that, you're going to want to start engine one or two. doesn't matter. For simple reasons, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the aircraft, whichever one you start first. I'm going to start engine two first, just to show you that you don't need to go in orders of so one, two, or anything like that. You must make sure your APU bleed is on. So APU bleed is here. Click this button to on, and the a the engines will now be all right to start. What, what I'd recommend if you did mess up, just select the engine switch to off, and then select it on again. That will then uh, reduce the chances of any errors you have. APU bleed must be on to start the engines. You must have the APU and APU bleed on to start the engines. If not, the engines will stop. If, the, if successfully done, the engines will start and this little bleed, this little thing will rise and then this thing will eventually rise. That means your engine is starting up successfully. If those didn't happen, then check your APU bleed is on, check that the engine mode is select to IGN start, which is this little knob here, which is one notch to the right, which is like that. It's highlighted in blue. And uh, make sure your APU is on itself and make sure your fuel pumps are on as well. So it wants me to set parking brakes because the pushback is complete, so you're going to want to click this button again, which is the parking brake button. And then GSX is going to do its thing, but this is not a GSX tutorial, so don't worry about GSX. Once we've done this, we're just going to wait for the engines to start, really. So uh, once the uh, first engine that you've started up has got 18 or 17.9, you can start the next engine up. So I'm going to start the engine one up now. Whilst the engines are starting up, I'm going to show you how to do, put on predictive winch gear, which is going to be important. To do that, you're just going to want to select this little knob here, this little switch, and you want to select it one notch to the right, which is selected auto. That will uh, reduce your chances of any errors you have. You'll get a warning here if you don't do that. So I think it's worth saying. And uh, to disregard messages, because you'll have a company message sign there, you're going to want to go down to the McDo, McDo menu, Atsu. Uh, AOC menu, receive messages, and you're going to want to acknowledge any messages by clicking the accept button until that uh, company message message has gone. You see, it's gone there in green. So we all good, and everything else is just standard. APU bleed should be there when the engine is signed. The parking brake should be on because you stood, stood at a standstill. That little button will go once the you're ready for a taxi. That little orange one. And then seatbelts and no smoking lights should be on anyway, so nothing's bad. 
going on now. So once the engines have started both for 18 there, you can uh, of course get rid of your pushback. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. And get rid of your pushback now. And it'll do its thing. As you can see, the aircraft is lowering there. Engines are on, as you can see, why the worse. announcement going on. From here you can get rid of the APU. APU bleed goes off first then you then you click the master switch button and that will uh, then turn off the APU. That available button will still show up and it will go away eventually once the APU has died because you turned it off. It takes a while to die off and it takes a while to power up as well. AP bleed must come off before you disconnect the master switch, which is the AP button essentially to turn it off and off. If you don't select the AP bleed off button off first, then you could run into issues. Not going into that though, because I want to keep it simple. Now from here, you're going to want to select auto brakes to the max position, which is here, and then you're going to want to select your flaps positions. In my case, it's one, so I'm going to select this lever here, one notch to flaps one. Then you want to going to put the speed brakes to armed, which is just pushing them up like that. And then you're going to want to put the engines back to normal mode by selecting this button here, and then selecting it one notch to the left to the middle centered position, which is normal mode. And then the engine, this page will change once done successfully. And then you'll see ground spoilers have been armed by the little green message here, which is what we did by pulling this lever up one notch. After you've done that, you should get a little takeoff config check. This is a checklist to check you're ready for takeoff and you haven't missed anything out. To, to do this, you just want to go to auto brakes to max, which is what we've just done. Seatbelt signs and no smoke signs should be on, which are these buttons here. One notch up for both of them. Cabin should be checked, which is by clicking this button here. This will also do it automatically. This will only uncheck once you're nearer to the runway, though, so don't worry about that just yet. And then flaps should be at the takeoff config, which will be shown in your performance page. In my case, on flaps one, it's this button before the slash, before the down or the up. And that is your flaps position. To s now, that brings me on to another thing. You're going to want to set your trim. Your trim is this little lever here. You've got a load of numbers down the side of your throttles. These are for the trim which is the thing which is after the slash of the flaps, which is the THS. DN means down, and then the number 0 0.2. So I want to put it down 0 0.2, so I'm going to want to select it this way, 0 0.2. Now, you don't really know where that is, you've got to estimate. I'm going to say it's there. You might not be 100% accurate, but it doesn't matter. As long as you're there about, it'll be fine. So you're going to want to select that. 0.2 and you see DN and up if it's down you want to select it this way if it's up you want to select it this way all good we are ready for taxi now awesome now you're going to want to know where you're going so make sure you're looking at something which refers to the airport so you know where you're going don't care what you use for that this is a phoenix tutorial taxi lights go on so one notch up this little leader here and then we are ready for taxi now uh, yeah nothing else well there is one thing you want to do and you're going to want to select your initial climbing altitude now if you don't know this just put it to your cruising altitude the altitude knob is here select that to either your cruising altitude or altitude given to you on charts I'm going to do flight level 160, which is 16,000 feet, because I have charts. But if you don't have charts or you don't understand what I'm going on about, just select your cruising altitude from Simbrief. Once you've done this, you are ready for departure and taxi. So you're going to taxi to the runway at this point. So parking brakes off. And the aircraft should move automatically by its own little power. As you can see, it's sort of doing slowly, if you can see. 
and uh, you, you can run off this but if it isn't going too fast you want it to go faster then you are going to use throttles just use a little bit though don't go any further than 50 percent and give the aircraft a little push once you've given it a little push to how fast you want it to go set set the throttles to idle and that will keep the aircraft at a steady speed in my case, I'm going to taxi to runway 02 at Lisbon today. I'm just going to find a nice route for myself. Right. I'm going to just, yeah. So, taxi to the runway is the next step. I do recommend that you understand concepts of aviation before watching this. But as I said, I'm keeping it simple, so if, even if you don't, you can still follow this tutorial pretty nicely. Or these tutorials, should I say. So we're taxiing to the runway now. I'm not skipping anything, by the way, because I don't want you to think that I'm skipping crucial things out. So I'm not doing any editing. I'm just doing everything to the book. As you put it in real life. Very uh, weird taxi on the road. And I'm not on any online service for this, so we're just offline, so it doesn't matter what we do. Got no requirements, we're just here to fly a plane for fun. It's what I recommend you do when you're flying for the first time in an aircraft. I do recommend Navigraph charts, which are the Jefferson charts for accurate flight data. And I recommend you learn how to read off those, but also how to read off to the free sim brief as well, because that will help you out a big deal when you're learning these aircraft, especially the high fidelity ones. Lots of tap aircraft which you'd expect at Lisbon is Portugal airline after all we are an easy jet service today uh, apologies for the loud coming up beautiful easy jet service now, I'm not sure what he's gonna do but I can see the runway there see him there. I'm hoping I can just get through him. These are AI aircraft by the way so don't worry about going through them or me going through them because it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to make you guys wait around. I don't want to waste your guys time. But I also don't want to lead you to mislead the tutorial so I'm not skipping anything but I'm also not going to uh, waste any time. So I'm just going to get straight onto the runway Uh, before you enter the runway though, you're going to want to select landing lights, these buttons here, and then runway turn offs, and then you want to select this nose lights to take off mode, which were previously on taxi mode. All you do for that is selecting all these knobs one notch up. You can do the landing lights two notches up, but that doesn't actually matter, just do one notch up if you want to keep it simple. Now we're going to try and line ourselves up onto the runway. And we're going to just stop on the runway. Now from here, there might be a few things you want to do. Take off config check to make sure nothing's missing. To do that, you're going to, going to click this button here and you'll find there's a little test button in blue. Click this button and that will go away. If all successful, it will just go to normal. If not, the aircraft may make a noise and give you an error warning saying you forgot to do something. Nice smart feature for the Airbus to make sure you don't forget anything. From here, you're just going to want to make sure everything's set up as it was from the taxi. Uh, if everything is, then you're going to, want to select the transponder mode over here to TARA, so one notch to the right again. Instead of TA, it would be on TARA. This will make sure every aircraft in your vicinity is showing up, not just the ones in close proximity. 
any which are going to affect you at all in the air or on the ground. Once you've done that, you're ready for takeoff. Now, so to do takeoff, parking brake off, thrusts to 50%. Fifty percent. Make sure that the aircraft is stable and moving. Once you've done that, you're going to select the takeoff config, which in my case is flex. So I'm going to select my thrusts to flex mode. And you want to put your chrono on. Which you do that by clicking these bit little buttons here, this one, and this one here, where the mouse is pointing. And you want to take off now. Ignore that this may not be a straight out takeoff. This might be a bit wobbly, but ignore that. It's the flying which is the concept of it which is going to count for the tutorial. Auto thrust should come on, man flex SRS and runway should come on in green on the nav area. Bloody hell, car crosswind. Gear can come up which is this little button here, one notch up. And you're up into the air now by this point. And you see Lisbon there. Lever climb will be flashing, so what you want to do is one notch down, which is lever climb on the thrusts. Or however you set it up for the peripherals you're using. All peripherals are different, so uh, I can't really exactly help you on the thrusts exactly, but I can tell you what to set them to. You want to make sure you're keeping it climbing. Referring to charts if necessary. Keeping the aircraft nice and steady. Making sure speeds are stable, making sure you're climbing at a decent rate. You'll be all good. And you also want to take note what your transition altitude is. Again, not going to tell you what that is, but keeping it simple. But once you're past transition altitude, this QNH will go to standard mode by just simply pushing the button in. I'm not quite at that point yet. Once you're through S speed, which is here, you're going to want to set the flaps to zero mode. So one notch down. One notch up, I mean, in the flaps lever to get them back to zero. And of course, you can just fly the plane out. If you want, you can set the autopilot on now. I'm going to set my autopilot on now to keep it simple for you guys. Once you're in the air, you can set the autopilot. I'm through transition, so I'm going to push this lever up one notch. In my case, it's just down on the scroll wheel. Clicking the scroll wheel puts them to standard on the mouse. Yours may be different, depends on your key binds, but you're just basically pushing it up. You're pulling it, pulling for standard as it says, literally on the knob. Pull it for standard. And uh, you're basically just going to climb out now. Uh, the aircraft is going to comply to constraints and it's going to keep the speed steady in autopilot mode and you're going to fly out. Once flaps are set to zero, you can set the ground spoilers to uh, unarmed now so by just pushing them down to the speed brakes. You could, you, you could even also uh, set the uh, landing lights and runway turn ups to off now, but you usually do that by 10,000 feet in the real aircraft. Uh, but to, you know, you just set them down one position and they'll all be, well, actually. The nose lights, which is this one, you want to set them down two positions. Down two positions. This is the runway turnoff light. You want to set that down one position. And the runway turnoffs, you want to set those down two positions to put them to off. Once that's done, uh, all those lights will be off. You can even set the seatbelt signs to off by one notch down, then one notch down on the no smoke lights. And then everything, all the messages will come off on this page. Meaning there's nothing you've forgotten to do. Hooray. At this point, you're just waiting to climb up to the altitude you've uh, set. So, uh, at this point, just climb to your cruising altitude. 
or what altitude you've been given by ATC, and uh, you're good to go. You're flying the plane. Pretty neat, eh? Hey? Thanks uh, for watching. This was the Taxi to Take of Tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, then please do consider liking and subscribing. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, uh, and uh, see you in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.